we're going to look at how to create a design using the click to design option in the program. And then we're going to look at a little bit of editing. There are images that are linked um, in the menu with these videos. So if you haven't downloaded those, you may want to download and unzip those so you can follow along with the lessons. To create a design using the click to design or automatic digitizing, you're going to start with an image. So we're going to go to the main menu and select image and insert image. You're going to locate the folder where you've placed those images that you downloaded from the website. When the open dialog box appears, you're going to see a list of, you know, little icons indicating the, the images that are in there. And they're only going to display the bitmap images. In the folder that you downloaded, there are bitmaps and WMF images. If you wish to see more designs or more images, you need to go down to the files of type and select all files. Or if you know that they're WMF images, or whatever format they may be, select the format. In this case, we're going to go with all files. This is going to display even design files for me that are in this folder. If I want to see what the images look like without having to click on each image and look in the preview, I'm going to go to this little icon that's called View Menu. Click on it, the little arrow next to it, and select Thumbnails. This is going to display a picture of all of the images that are in this folder. We're going to go ahead and start with this image. You're going to left click on the image to select it, and then click Open. This is going to insert the image into the design file, and it's going to scale this down a little bit. You're going to see your whole hoop display on the screen. The image should be selected with these black bounding boxes. And over in the resequence view, you should see the image displayed with the picture icon next to it. To begin using the click to design, we have to do a little bit of image processing or image preparation. So we're going to locate the image preparation icon and select that icon. When the image preparation dialog box opens, you're going to see that the program is automatically going to try to reduce the image to the best number of, of colors for the program. You can adjust this. In this case, if you really compare the image to what's on our screen before processing, we've lost a couple of colors. We've lost the green here, and we've lost the pink um, in the cheek. You have to decide how important those are to you, or if you could easily change or add them later. In this case, I know that we can change them, because we can always change the color of an area. And we can add this later. So I'm going to go ahead and go with the program's recommendation. And just say OK. The image is going to change on my screen to what the image preparation has um, determined, six colors. To begin the automatic process, I'm going to locate the Click to Design icon. There's a small black arrow on the corner of this icon. If you click on the arrow, a pop-out menu appears, or a fly-out menu. There are two options. The first option is Instant Click to Design. That's not going to give you any control. It's going to let the program control all of these settings. The second option is called Click to Design Advanced. Click to Design Advanced is going to let you control a few more things. We're going to go ahead and use Click to Design Advanced. And here is our Click to Design dialog box. In this dialog box, it's asking me on the left side what type of stitch I want. Auto Select allows the program to determine what type of stitch should be in the filled areas. These areas are all fairly large. We have, you know, the large area in the cloud, um, the moon, and even in the hat and star sections. There aren't any small sections that you would want to have created in a satin stitch. In this case, I am going to go ahead and say I want it to be a weave fill for all of the filled areas. The filled areas are going to be these colors in the filled colors column. If I don't wish to create the white background, I can left click on the white color chip and drag it over to the omit colors. Now the problem is going to be that the cloud is in that white color section. But if I don't omit the colors, then I'll also create all of these background areas that are displayed in gray. And when I create the background areas, 
there's a good chance the travel stitches will be placed underneath this. So we're going to omit the white color and we'll look at making the cloud in a different manner. These are my current fill colors. We've told it in the fill column up here that we want them all to be a weave. The next column over here is detail colors. The detail color is going to be my outline. In the detail section I have two options, satin lines or satin. I'm going to go ahead and select satin lines and the reason is that satin lines are going to allow me to change this to a different line type after design creation where satin would be similar to a filled area only it's going to be called a turning fill or satin fill. It's not going to behave like a line. So now that I've created these settings here I have a couple more options at the bottom. I could add an outline which would outline each section or I could add a border which would create a border all the way around the outline of the image. I'm not going to use these two options at this time. I'm going to go ahead and click OK and let the program do the work and you can see at the bottom of your screen if you're following along that it's generating stitches and when it's done the stitches will display on the screen. Here are all of my areas over in the Stitch Sequence Viewer. You can see by the little kidney bean shape that these are considered filled areas or weave filled areas. Okay, the outline is here and it's in a satin line. And there's another portion of the outline that's also in a satin line. If I select just the outline because I want to make some changes, then I need to look at how to access the properties because right now I can't really access those properties unless I go to Edit and Ungroup. When I ungroup the outline, you can see you have a lot of pieces and you now have the line icon here next to each one of your black outline pieces. With all of those pieces still selected and surrounded by the blue boxes in your sequence view, go to um, with all of those items still selected with blue lines in your sequence viewer, go down to your object details and click on that icon and you can change the line type here if you like. I'm going to for right now go ahead and leave this as a satin line but if I wanted to I could change this to a run line. I would have a little editing to do to make sure that my outline lined up with the areas um, because the satin line is a little bit wider than a run line would be. But I'm going to go ahead and say OK and just leave this alone or cancel. And I want to look at the white section. The white section of this cloud was not created because we told it to omit the background colors. What we can do is use another tool which is called um, click to fill. And again there's a little black swing out or and again there's a little black arrow so we know that we have a fly out menu and I can select from several options. The first option is click to parallel we fill which is what we've used for the other areas and it's got a little hole in the image or the icon indicating that if there were um, like a hole in that area like eyes or polka dots that it would create that for me. This is just going to be a solid fill with no holes created in it. This is going to be your turning angle or satin fill this is going to be create a center line and this is click to outline. We need to use one of these two to create the cloud inside. So I'm going to go ahead and select click to parallel we fill without holes. And I'm going to come over to the cloud section and place a left click. Now I've got the cloud filled in and it's going to stitch last because I've created it um, using these, this other tool rather than the automation. So over my stitch sequence view, I'm going to click on the color button and go to the colors and here is the white section of the cloud and I'm going to left click on it to select it. Then I'm going to press and hold the left mouse button and drag it to the first stitching position. Okay, we have the yellow, st um, yellow star and we have the yellow moon. We could make these colors the same color if we wanted to or we could change these to be a little more different in hue and make it stand out a little bit more. Now we also have this section of the hat that was originally 
kind of like a nice pastel green. And right now, you know, it's the old color of the sun. You know, right now it's the color of the star. But if we left click on this, we can change it to whatever color we want. The only thing that's missing from our original image is the pink cheek here. And that's very easy to create using a quick little manual tool, which is a circle tool. And again, it's got a little fly out arrow. And we're not going to create a big satin stitch circle for the cheek. We're just going to use this parallel fill circle and come over to the cheek area, left click, hold your mouse button in when you left click and drag it. And there's our circle. Now we can always go down to select and move this where we need it to move. You can also resize it just by dragging on those little boxes. And to change it to pink, just come over here with the item selected and click on the pink. And again, you can move it into a new position. And there's our first little automated design.